Hey, folks. Welcome. My name is Paul Batham. I'm a developer on the Azure team at Microsoft. Today, I want to talk about building enterprise mobile apps, line of business apps, using Azure as the back end, specifically using a service that we've been working on for a few years now called Azure Mobile Services. Do we have many just Azure users in the room? Who here uses Azure? All right, heaps of people. What about mobile services? I, can, I see a pretty good number of hands. That's not too bad. So for those of you who haven't really spent any time looking at, at mobile services yet, what is it? It's a managed backend for your mobile app. That backend runs in Azure, and it has a suite of capabilities, capabilities such as working with data. You have data that you need to retrieve and store. It might be in SQL Server, SQL Azure. It might be in Table Azure. You know, we have support for MongoDB, a bunch of different uh, data providers. And of course, there's a bunch of scenarios around working with that data. You want to be able to authenticate users in your app. If it's a consumer-focused app, yeah, it might be the social identity providers, Google, Facebook, so on. Uh, if it's a line of business app, you probably want to let uh, the employees log into the app using their Active Directory credentials. We have support for push notifications, of, of course. I mean, this is, this is an obvious one. And you want push notifications that work at scale across all the different platforms. And then there's a bunch of more advanced scenarios for our push notifications. Maybe you want to take the users that have logged in with their Active Directory credentials and set up registrations for all their devices when they log in. And then actually use notification hubs to say, this, this, this is their ID in Active Directory. This is a tag. And I want to be able to send push notifications to that tag. And then when I do that, notification hubs handles figuring out, OK, well, what are the devices that he had registered and sends the notification to those devices. Now, as well as these built-in capabilities, you need the ability to add your own custom code. So with mobile services, you're getting a bunch of built-in functionality, but also a ASP.NET Web API project that you're deploying with your code in it, or a JavaScript uh, project using, Node using Node.js. So you have services. You need to be able to consume those services. So you need a, like a client SDK, right? So we have a big suite of, of SDKs that cover most of the major platforms, right? We have a .NET portable class library. That's how you say it. Um, and it's uh, got support for Xamarin, iOS, Xamarin, Android, Windows Store, Windows Phone, you know, all of that stuff. And then you know, if you're building native apps, we have you know, Objective-C SDK for iOS, you know, JavaScript SDK if you're building web apps, all talking to a REST API to, to these services. So I was at Evolve last year, and I got you know, lots of good questions. And there was a, like a central theme to those questions. You know, I, I, I showed writing server-side code in JavaScript, and I don't think the audience was a huge fan of that. Who would have, who would have thought? Uh, obviously, lots of people care about the offline or the occasionally connected scenario. Right? You need to have an app that's responsive, that works well without a network connection. But then when you have a network connection, how do you sync? And there's a lot of complication there, right? And really, you'd rather have somebody else solve it for you. As I mentioned earlier, Active Directory is, a, is another one. You, you have an on-premise Active Directory. You want to either sync or federate that with Azure Active Directory, and then make it so that when users, when your employees of the, of the business run that app, they sign in with the same credentials that they use every day. So, you know, this is a, there was a common theme, right? People asking for a line of business scenarios. And I added a few more to this list. What about I have existing database systems, big schemas already. I need to build mobile apps on top. I'm not even prepared to move that data to the cloud. It is on-premise, and it is staying on-premise. How can I build mobile apps on top of that? So the great news is that We've been investing in these scenarios, and Mobile Services has great, great support for all of these scenarios. And as well as investing in the actual functionality, uh, we've also been trying to do a better job of building more representative samples 
of kind of what is, what is a bit, build samples that are a bit more like real world applications. So Field Engineer is one. Uh, it's quite nice. It's, it's a very complete sample. It's cross-platform. There's two clients, a Windows client and a Xamarin iOS client. Uh, it demonstrates you're know, working with an existing database. It you know, has got really nice uh, examples of the richer Azure Active Directory integration scenarios, such as uh, I have a certain API that's exposing some data, and I only want users in a given AAD group to be able to access that data. Uh, let's have a, just a quick look at this. I'm going to run the app. And I'm also going to run uh, the iOS version. Let's grab this here. I'll sign in. So I'm signing in with my Active Directory credentials and saying, yes, I'm going to grant access. Hopefully, the data will uh, load up. And my iOS app has logged in as well. And so I've got a view, two views, you know, same user logged in. I can see the same data. And I want to work with this data, but I want to do it offline. So I have a little uh, thing here where I'll just pretend that the network connection is gone. I'm not bold enough to actually pull the plug out <laughs> for, <laughs> for this bit session. Uh, so uh, I told this app that it's offline. I can go here. I can mark this job as complete. Here's the customer signature. OK, so the job's been marked as complete. I can still you know, search for, for, for customers. Yeah, OK, this guy, I've got a bunch of data. App's still working nicely offline. Uh, of course, I won't see that change that I made. The new job that's in progress is number six. But I can't see that at the moment over here, because my data hasn't been synced yet. right? So we'll take the app back online and let it sync. Should only take a second. And then I go over here, have a look again. It refreshes. Job number six is going. So this is a basic you know, sync, sync example. And if I uh, move on, the, the thing is, is that like, you can go ahead and grab this. The full source code is available. You can install the Win8 app directly and play with it. Uh, grab the Xamarin code as well. But the thing is, is that uh, I don't want to just open the code for this very large sample and start just picking out pieces. I'd rather try to start with a much smaller project if I'm going to show you what was actually involved in implementing some of these scenarios. So I've been working on this, this what I call field engineer light, just a Xamarin Forms-based version of the app uh, that has covering the main scenarios, just, just not as much code, not as, not as much of trying to be a, a full real world example. It has offline with sync. It has a, an amazing programmer UI. I'm not much of a designer, sorry. Um, it's got user authentication with Active Directory. And I, I just uploaded it to GitHub today. So uh, uh, if you're interested in looking at the code more when we're done with this session, you, you can go and grab it. So. I'm going to do a bunch of demos using this Field Engineer Lite sample that I've made. I want to walk through setting up the client, talking to the server, working with offline data, and doing sync. I want to then add AAD integration. And then I want to talk, show, do a demo on actually connecting to on-premise systems. So let's start with offline data. I'm going to switch to. Uh, Xamarin Studio first. I'm using a combination of Xamarin Studio for doing the client development and Visual Studio for the server development, so it shouldn't be too hard for you to figure out where I am at any point. Uh, I have a, a, a project up here. Let me zoom in a little bit. We'll have a look at some of this stuff. So, you know, it's a Xamarin Forms shared code project. Most, pretty much all the application code is in this one. And I have some platform specific stuff here. Uh, the iOS project has got not much at all, really. We could look at the, nuget, the NuGets. Uh, I have this, the mobile services uh, NuGet. This is the primary thing you search for mobile services in NuGet. This is what you get. It's also on the Xamarin component store. Uh, we also have a reference to this SQLite store. Uh, this is a pre-release NuGet we have, because the, this offline functionality is currently in beta. 
Uh, I don't know how long, much longer that will be. We've had it in preview for quite a while now. Uh, so if you're going to try to install this, just remember to tick the pre-release box. Uh, the rest of this stuff, I have Xamarin Forms and then some dependencies, right? Um, not much else that's, that's interesting. If uh, we look at the shared code project, oh, one more thing I'll talk quickly about is the delegate, the app delegate. It's not a lot here. A bunch of initialization code. Some of you might have seen this. All, a lot of libraries are now, especially portable class libraries, are doing this pattern of having a init function that you have to call in your iOS project. Because Xamarin iOS does this optimization where if you can't see any code that you referencing a certain assembly, it just doesn't compile it in. So you have like one dummy init call to, to make sure it includes it. So there's some init calls here, and then making a, a, a page from my shared code project showing it. That's about it. So all the interesting stuff is in the, uh, in the shared code project. We can look at the models quickly. I've got some models here. Uh, the models, I'm not doing view models. I'm just trying to keep it simple. My, I've got my job class. It's got a bunch of properties. It has a customer. has a list of equipment. That's about it. Uh, the pages, I won't really go through the views very much because I'm, I'm not really a Xamarin Forms expert. I mean, I've got it working. But uh, I think the interesting parts are where the Xamarin Forms code interacts with the mobile service, interacts with data, right? So you know, it's factored so that every time we're going to do something interesting, I call into this job service. This is where we're going to spend our time on the client. At the moment, it's pretty much stubbed out. Functions that don't really do anything and some dummy data. So I'll go ahead and run it. Because it's just stubbed out uh, you know, and dummy data, I can work with it, but it's not going to persist. So I can mark this job as complete. Great. This job is marked as, as complete. My status updated. But you know, I kill the app. I run it again. I lose my changes. Right? All the interesting parts of this app are not implemented yet. So the next step, of course, is to get the data into the application. I'll switch over to Visual Studio. I have a mobile service already prepared here. You can take a look at this guy. So this is, if you haven't spent any time looking at the uh, .NET backend for mobile services yet, it's ASP.NET Web API based. Right? So this is an ASP.NET Web API project with a bunch of extra NuGets. So there's a bun bunch of references here. Here are the mobile services references. If you want to make a new mobile service, you would say new project, and then you would pick cloud mobile service, and that's got the default template. So what's in this project? Again, not a whole lot so far. I have some models, and these are database models. So for example, here is a, a job model that's got, you can see, attributes for annotating data and, and, and so on. Uh, I have a database context. This is an Entity Framework database context. We have just built-in support for Entity Framework. Mobile services are designed to just work alongside Entity Framework very nicely. Uh, and so the idea is that you could take, if you have you know, a bunch of existing investments, say, in, in Entity Framework, and you want to go and reuse your models and contexts in mobile services, you can totally do that. So in order to actually take this data and expose it so that my client application can retrieve it, I need to make a controller. So I'll go here, say add controller. Visual Studio understands the mobile services controller types as well. So you can see here I've got a table controller. So I'll say add that. And I'll say I want it for my job class, You know, use my existing database context. Let's add that. So it makes me a, a table controller. This table controller is a, a, a class that we provide that eventually inherits from API controller. Uh, and it's got some initialization code and then functions for the various HTTP operations. So uh, even if you haven't really used Web, AP, Web API before, but you've spent some time saying using ASP.NET MVC, this shouldn't be too unfamiliar to you. Really, the only difference is uh, these are focused around HTTP methods. 
So I have a thing here for getting all the jobs. I'm going to kill some of these because I'm just not going to use them in the demo today. This patch job, this is for doing updates. We'll keep that one because we're going to mark the jobs as, as completed and so on. Uh, I'm not going to use these other ones, so we'll just we'll get rid of them today. OK. So uh, I could go ahead and run this locally because it's just a normal web API project and f you know, fiddle with it and so on. Uh, I, what I'd find is that it's just going to give me job data. But when we looked at the you know, examples of the, the, the data that we saw, there was like job data with customer data and a list of equipment and so on. I have a choice. I can either add controllers for the other tables that I have and have the client know that it's pulling data from all of them and kind of stitching it together. Or I could say, you know what? Like That data for, that, for my mobile client at the moment is read-only. So why make it pull it separately and, and try to attach it all together? Why not just work with some denormalized data? Why not just return the customer and equipment information alongside in, as part of the job? So I'm just going to do that and say, expand property here. My job uh, has got a customer. And it's got, I need to add a using. And it's got a, a list of equipment. Uh, so equipments. OK. Uh, let's run this. Give it a few seconds to, to load up. And as I was, as I was saying, you, know, you can just, just run this locally. I can just, I'm going to poke it with, uh, with Postman. You can see I've been busy doing that uh, lately. I need this local host request. And uh, I should get some, some, some data back uh, with you know, the equipment data, also with a pile of customer data and a pile of sorry job data, customer data, equipment data. So I'm actually I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to be Goldilocks here. Uh, first amount of data was not enough. Then I added my customer and equipment's data, but this is too much. I'm looking for something that's just right. And that is, if you're going to have you know, existing on-premise data sets, they're often very large, big schemas, lots of columns, you want to spend some time thinking about what actual data you want to send to the client, send the data the client needs. And similarly, you care about what data the client actually sends back. So, is, are many of you familiar with the idea of data transfer objects, DTOs? Yeah, it's a few, right? Because we use this in MVC pretty often. To, we make a separation between what data we want going over the wire versus what the database model is in the database. So I'm going to make one more change to, this, to this, uh, service, this app here before I publish it to use a DTO instead of a, a, my, my job model directly. Um, so. I'm just going to tell this thing to show all files, because I have a few files over here. Yep. So I have some DTOs that I'm just going to include in the project. So my job DTO has got a relationship to a customer DTO and equipment DTO, and it's kind of and these have got like a subset of the data. They don't have quite or have all the data. And I need to tell the system, OK, well, I have these types. Uh, here's how I want you to map between them. And uh, we have this uh, really sweet library. I, I don't know if many of you have used Automapper before. Automapper is great for working with DTOs. Saves you a lot of, uh, a lot of repetitive code. Automapper is already in uh, the mobile services project. And so I have this uh, configuration file here that's going to describe how I get from my job database model to a DTO and back again. I'm just going to uh, reference that, just use it quickly. This is my app start. This is where all the initial configuration uh, stuff happens. So I'm just going to say auto mapper, if I can type, uh, create mapping with this configuration. That'll call that code that I had there. So now the system understands the relationship between the two types in most places. Uh, I do still need to come back to my job controller here. Because it still thinks that it's working with jobs. So let's do a super quick find and replace on this file. Yep. 
and import the job DTO type. So uh, the one other thing I have here is this domain manager. This is a mobile services thing that knows how to basically bridge the two worlds of the controller and the, uh, the database, uh, the entity framework instance in this case. I just need to give it a slightly uh, different, I'm using a couple of types here that are as part of this sample uh, to reduce the amount of uh, code I need to put on screen. Uh, so this is going to handle the rest of the step, right? So if I uh, publish this, I should be ready to consume the data from my client application. I'll publish. Yep. So I have a mobile service already set up. It's going to go ahead and publish to that now. Let's have a quick look at it. Uh, TV Evolve. So I have here, what I'm going to use is the quick start we have. The quick start helps you make like new projects or connect existing projects to that mobile service. So I'm going to grab some of this code here. Uh, my mobile service was published. Great. Uh, let's hit it to see whether or not it's returning the, uh, the right set of data, the set of data that I'm happy with. Yes. Okay, I definitely don't have as much uh, equipment data that I had, I had here before. So uh, let's go back over to Xamarin Studio. And I'm going to drop in that code that I had that's just connecting to my mobile service. So this mobile service client type here, this is like the root uh, object that's in our, in our NuGet. You new it up. You give some settings. This, this key thing here, this is really just used during development. It's just it makes sure that when you publish stuff to your mobile service by default initially, you, know, you haven't distributed your app. Nobody has this key. Nothing can you sort of randomly hit the endpoints that you're publishing to the cloud. While you're doing that, while you're doing your development, you get to think about security, figure out how you want to actually lock down all your data, and then you don't really need this key anymore. So uh, I also need a table that's going to hold my, my, my job data. So I'm going to declare that. And in this initialize method, I, I'm going to drop in some code that's going to set up my local SQLite database that's going to get used by mobile services for all the local operations. So I give it a file name. Here's the database to use. This with logging, this is me. I've just added some extra types here that do more logging uh, so that we can see what's going on in the console when we're running the app. And it may help if the demos go to hell. Um, so we define a table on this store that we're creating and saying, hey, you need to have a job table. And then we tell the mobile service, go ahead and initialize using this store. And then finally, we get a reference to this sync table. We use the term sync table to differentiate between a table that acts as a proxy so that when you call it, you're calling to the network service versus, in this case, the sync table is a local table that you can execute queries on, that you can put records in, and then sync later. So uh, with my initialize setup, I'm going to set up what actually happens when we sync. When the app syncs, I want to first just check to see if the user is authenticated, show a login prompt if they're not authenticated yet. That is just a stubbed out method that's going to return true. We'll get to that in the next demo. Uh, you can see here, my mobile service has this sync context, and we call push on it. You're not calling push on a single table, because you may have created five local tables, created data in all of them, and you need to get those changes synced to the server. You want them to be played on the server in the same order that they happened locally, right? If you have like some foreign key relationships that your client app makes sure that the data is corrected in the right way to honor those relationships, and then the data is just pushed in some random order, that's not going to work, right? So you push the entire context of all the local changes. After pushing what we had, let's pull down anything that's new. And for the first time we run this, it'll be all the data. I am using link here to modify the data set so that a subset of the data is returned. And again, we will change this later on when we do uh, auth. Finally, I call pull 
Paul uses this link query that I set up, and I give it a name so that the next time that I do this query, I don't want to pull all the same data again. I know when I last did the query. Just pull the data that's changed since then. It's much more efficient. OK, we have a couple more to fill out. There was a search interface there, right? So we're going to make that work. More, more link queries. I'm going to make a query. It's going to run against my table. It's going to look for, does the job number match the search input? Does the title, does the status? Just a few, few different things. This, we're going to, when we run this, we're going to see it executing SQL on the local database. Completing a job, well, it's pretty straightforward. We set it status. I'm also going to tell the job table, hey, the job was updated. That's a local operation. But I also want to do a little bit more than that. I, I want to say, hey, once we mark one job as complete, check to see if we have any in progress. Another link query on the local database. No, we don't have any in progress. Well, do we have one in pending? We do. There is a job that's in the pending state. Well, let's mark it as in progress. We basically picked up the next job off the queue and, again, wrote it to the local database. Uh, this clear method I need for some of just to, exp to do some of the demos, so we'll implement that. It's mostly a matter of just calling this purge method on the table. Uh, and let's run uh, the application again. OK, so you can see uh, I'm getting some nice output of what local operations are happening on the database as the application is running. I'm going to hit sync, and we'll find out whether or not I, ah, I did not screw it up. We've got some data. Sweet. So the, the app is now running against the mobile service that I published to the cloud. Uh, and I can go and look at the data. You can see my customer and equipment data has come down as well. That's great. So now I want to test whether or not it you know, actually, actually syncs. I'll also, also just check to see whether or not the searching works. So I can search for, for 50, and I get just 50 back. And you can see here, again, efficient SQL queries executing against a local database. You could have a, a large amount of data locally, and you don't have to worry about it because you're not trying to do something where you load it all in memory and look at it or whatever. You're just getting nice, efficient local SQL queries. So. Uh, to really actually check to see if sync is working, I need a second client. Uh, I've been holding off showing you the Android one, because it's even uglier than this one. But uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll run it. OK, come on, Android. You can do it. I'm going to also just run the iOS version again. So this guy still has his data. Tell the Android one to sync. Great. They can see the same data at the moment. They, they, I, they both think that they're the same user. They both see that job 50 is currently on site. They both see 59 is the next one in the list. So I'll just go to this one. Market is complete. Great. 59 is the next one in the list here. If I sync here, nothing's happening, right? Because I haven't synced over here on this side. So let's sync this one. Changes actually get sent to the server. Now I sync this one. Changes come through. So you've got, at this point, the, like the full power of a nice local database that you can work with. You get to use Link and all the things that we love. Uh, as you make changes, they're getting batched up in the, in the local database. And then when you sync, push to the server. And it's efficient in that when you pull your data back down again, everything has been time stamped. You know when the last time you pulled was. So you're only pulling the data that changed. OK. So what's next? I want to get rid of the, the hard-coded you know, user ID stuff, and instead have real users in the app. So I'm going to go into the Azure portal and look at some of the stuff that I have configured here. I have in Active Directory, 
a default directory that's got a couple of users that I created. Of course, you, you, know, you would, real world, this idea is that you're going to take your existing on-premise Active Directory and have it sync or federate to Azure Active Directory. Uh, I have some applications, including one set up and pre-configured that understands that it needs to be working with my mobile service. This here is the URL for my mobile service. There is a client ID that I whiz fast. Here we go. Uh, and I want that because I'm going to use that on the mobile service side for the association. So again, I have this already set up, but I will show you. If I go to the Identity tab for my mobile service, you can see here the client ID that I had from my Active Directory, Azure Active Directory application is already there in mobile services. So this is the, the two-way handshake between the two, right? to make it so that what I want is when a user logs in, all the operations that they perform against the mobile service are in the context of their identity. right? So what else do I have to do? I've set up the configuration aspects. There's a couple of changes we just need to make to the server quickly. So uh, the first one is I just want to call out. I'm already referencing this. Uh, I need to make this bigger so you can actually see. Come on. There's this security NuGet that I'm using. This is basically a set of extensions that are not part of the main one yet that cover, in this case, what we're going to do is a server-side Azure Active Directory authentication flow. So to use this NuGet, I just make a slight change uh, to my application start. I have some code here that I'm just going to uncomment out. It's removing one Active Directory login provider and replacing it with another one. Uh, I said that this is going to be a server-side flow. I mean, basically, there's two, ways, two different ways to do it. Either you have a client SDK that knows how to do the auth flow. So for example, you go and download a Facebook client SDK and put it in your app, and it knows how to do the auth. Or you let the server manage the process. It's easier to set up and, uh, for this demo today to show you the server side flow, which is why I'm, I'm doing this. So that's the configuration. But there's one more step that I want to do, right? Like I, I want to make it so that the server is now enforcing the rules about what data people can see. And this is going to be pretty straightforward. I, I'm going to say where um, uh, yeah, the jobs uh, agent ID is equal to some AAD ID that I got from somewhere. Where did I get it from? I have this helper method here. Uh, I do need to make this method async. All right. So uh, this, what, what, oh, var, that's pretty funny. OK, AD ID equals, OK. So what is this helper? It's very straightforward. The controller has an I principle, right, a user. That principle is a mobile service user. We can ask it, get me my identities. If they're logged in with Active Directory, well, then we get these Active Directory credentials. OK, so I've changed the, the server to filter the data. So I can get, go ahead and publish that. Yep. On the client, I'm going to, to change. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that this where clause here. Don't need this anymore. The client's just going to ask for all the data it can get. The server will decide what it can get. Uh, and then all the way down here, no, not that far, um, is authenticated. I want an actual implementation for this. So what does it take? Uh, this is reminding me a step that I kept forgetting when I was practicing, but I did remember. So we don't need that comment. Um, check the mobile service. Does it have a user? If not, call login. Call login, use Azure Active Directory. Uh, this UI context here, this is either an a Android activity or a UI view controller. Uh, tells it where to attach the UI to to show the login prompt. If the current user is not null after login, then they're authenticated. OK, so um, 
let's run the uh, Android version. And uh, once that's going, I will. I wish I could tell Xamarin Studio had to run two apps at once, but I haven't been able to figure out how to do it. Um, OK. And I also want the iOS one. Did this in the wrong order, sorry. Uh, iOS, go. So my changes have been published to my mobile service. Uh, and uh, what I need to do is bring up both side by side and tell, yeah, OK, so we'll tell you to sync. Should prompt me for login credentials. Great. So let's. Uh, this guy can be agent one at my domain. Oh, hold on. And then, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. And then this guy can be agent agent two, again at my uh, domain. OK, so uh, one thing I did forget to do is I'm seeing both sets of data here on iOS because I didn't clear my local database, right? So I had the data from previously. So I'll clear it, synchronize again, great. So now the two clients have logged in. They see different data. The server side is able to enforce this. The server can do a bunch of more interesting things, like you know, uh, one example that uh, is in the field engineer, the full-blown sample is, Make it so that this data is only accessible if you're in the agents group in AAD, in, in, right? So you can do a bunch of, bunch of uh, things like that. OK, so uh, let me switch back to slides. I ran through offline. I ran through Active Directory. What about connecting to on-premise systems? So we, we have this really cool uh, technology in Azure now called BizTalk hybrid connections. It's part of BizTalk. It acts as a bridge, a bridge between Azure and your enterprise. The way it works is you install this hybrid connection manager in your enterprise. You can install multiple instances of this thing, and th it, it load balances. Those hybrid connection managers are capable of connecting to other systems that you have in your premise. So for example, a SQL database running on port 1433. When you, my, I'm going to set this up. When we do this demo, what's going to happen is when my client talks to my mobile service, my mobile service will be configured to get data from using a connection string that is actually a connection string that points to my local VM here. And, uh, Hybrid Connection Manager will be the bridge so that my cloud mobile service is able to talk and get data from my local, my local database here. So let's, let's do that super quick. I have uh, on this machine uh, a Azure Hybrid Connection Manager service running. And I'm going to check in the portal that everything seems to be OK. We'll say, where is my BizTalk services? hybrid connections. If this is going to work, this is, will say get one instance connected. Great. In my mobile service, I am going to look at its configuration. When it loads, come on. OK, so I have a hybrid connection added here to my mobile service. And this is not mobile services specific. You can also do this for websites as well. Um, and I have a connection string set up. So I have this connection string here. You can see it's pointing to, to, to this, the VM that I'm in currently, this database that I, that I have here. So uh, what do I have to do to actually use it? One quick change. Uh, I do mean to copy this. So uh, we'll go to uh, my database context and change this to this, and then publish. So I'm telling my back end, you have a new connection string. This is the connection string to use. That connection string says, connect to pbatim win 8 one vm And thanks to hybrid connections, it's actually possible for my mobile service to do that. So uh, I'm going to 
uh, go back to my app. I don't have to change anything here. I'm just going to clear out the local data and sync again. This is going to take a little bit of time the first time because there is some initialization that occurs the first time some traffic throws through, uh, flows through the, uh, the hybrid connection. So I have data again. This data is being served from my local database. So let's, let's uh, verify that. Um, I have my local host, TestDB, here. And if I go to jobs, let's edit the data. OK, let's make this a bit bigger. Let's find one of the jobs that are I can see, so we can see it change. OK, so 57. Yeah, 57 is here. Aha, Paul beat the demo gods today. Um, do that. Switch back to simulator. Tell it to sync again. Search for record 58. Wait. 58? Ha. Huh. That's Paul was two, 57. <laughs> there we go. So you have my mobile service in the cloud talking to my local database. If you have on-premise systems that you can't move to the cloud, but you still need to build mobile apps on top of some of the data that's in those systems, this is pretty powerful stuff. OK. So uh, let's switch back to the slides. Hopefully, you've seen today that um, mobile services gives you a scalable and, and managed uh, backend for your mobile apps, a backend that provides a bunch of functionality for working offline uh, with data. And uh, I did forget to, to mention, like, uh, we do have good support for things like optimistic concurrency, so conflicts are handled. And uh, we have some great videos that cover all of those more hairy details for offline uh, in, in more detail. Uh, you've seen uh, doing make how easy it can be to set up uh, Azure Active Directory authentication in your mobile apps, how to build hybrid cloud apps apps that span the cloud and your premise, and reuse more, more code by using our portable class library uh, in, your, in your Xamarin projects. And a bunch of stuff I wish I could have covered. I didn't get to do push notifications at all. We have some great functionality with, with doing push notifications beyond just send a push. Um, doing real time, if push notifications are not even fast enough for you, we have support for Signal R in mobile services. So that's pretty cool. And we have, as I said, multiple storage providers. I, I demoed using SQL, but uh, you know, our table storage and MongoDB support also uh, works in offline scenarios, too. Bunch of links for you to grab out of the slide deck if you're interested in more of this stuff. Um, you know, some links to some videos that cover more advanced scenarios for, for enterprise stuff, more, more uh, advanced scenarios for working with your offline data. And, and more. So if you haven't already, I would encourage you, sign up for the free Azure trial. You get a bunch of mobile services for free that last even after the, the trial expires. Uh, there's an Azure mini hack, again, doing offline with mobile services. And that's it. Thank you very much. We have a minute 40 for questions. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave it there, totally. There's microphones, actually. You want to just jump up? Come on. It's just right there. It's right there. Aha. Perfect. Hey, Paul. Is there a way to uh, configure mobile services client to work with a proxy server if you're accessing mobile service from within a firewall? So uh, you have to work. I think you'll have to run that one be by me again. So I have, you have a, you want to have your, your systems behind a firewall, right? But uh, what? No, so for example, your, your mobile, mobile app is connected to your corporate Wi-Fi, which is before you get out of the firewall, you have to go through a proxy server. So I see. Is there a way to configure mobile services client to? Right. Pick up the proxy setting. I see what you're saying. So the way the mobile service client work, works is that it's, it just uses HTTP client, uh, the, the portable class library. I'm pretty sure that HTTP client has got proxy configuration, right? So it should be, it should be fine for you to do that. Like, I, it would be good to double check to make sure that you can uh, 
we, we like hold an HTTP client inside us, I think we make it accessible. So you should just be able to poke the settings on there. And if not, uh, send me a pull request that makes it public on our SDK, because it's open source. And, and then we've got that problem fixed. Anything else? No? OK, thanks very much, guys.